now 8.30 and we are here at the P. Burgos District. First part is the unveiling of the statue of God our Father. Beloved uh, brother and sisters in Christ, let us pray to God, Almighty Father, that we may be transformed to Christ's image to the devout use of this uh, uh, status as a uh, sign of God's love and also source of our faith and to also aid uh, our uh, prayers. May the Lord and His love and mercy cherish and reinforce with His blessing in this uh, status of Saint John uh, of Vega, known as uh, Saint John of the Hermit, uh, for the repair of the wall, also as a Hermit. Always pray to God, engage in meditation, in reflection uh, for change of the world, for the transformation of every follower of Jesus Christ. So, this stage is God bless them as a reminder to all of us. So that we will be always uh, we be able to be witness to Christ like here on earth without offending anybody and may attain eternal life with joy. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Guiding each one of us 
in this time, our time, the era of the Holy Spirit. So, you got the Father, you got the Son, who is Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is one God. So, this will remind us that we will baptize in the name of the Trinity. Not in the name, not only in the name of Jesus, but in the name of God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. As Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 27. Go to all places throughout the world, make all people my disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That was the mandate of our Lord, so that all people throughout the world will be proud of That is our mission. That's part of our mission. So as we prepare ourselves, you know, today is uh, season of Lent. Let us uh, ask ourselves whether we are willing to participate in this mission. So we cannot participate in this mission without doing something. We should be transformed first, and then and only then that we can participate in uh, We thank the, the uh, of the Great Sisters for providing us this status to remind us of our mission that was sort of the mouth is carnation and so we are so happy to have these carnation flowers for our Lolo Joaquin on his 156th in heaven and Lola Panga for her 145th birthday Now proceed there, Father, for the blessing of the tarpaulin. This is now the blessing of the tarpaulin. Okay. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit, Amen. We ask you to bless all the members of this family. Go to the family of the Francisca, Magla Kamana, Ortega, and the siblings, relatives, and friends. Bless them, Lord. Remember them always in your kingdom. They may be able to enter into your kingdom. Send your Holy Spirit to all of us. We are still alive in the world, but we are very good to do with men to over all the days of our life. I still remember their good examples and their teachings for all of us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As 
long as the person is alive, we celebrate their birthday enthusiastically on the date on which they were born. For Lola Francisca Pacalaxamana Ortega, she was born in Bangar, La Union, on March 9, 1877, and died on April 3, 1964, at the age of 87. We twins were 10 years old when she died. Joaquin Joaquino Ortega was born in Cebu to Antonio Versosa Ortega of Manila and Juana Joaquino of Surigao on March 11, 1866. He died May 31, 1943. Papa Ivaristo Ortega, his youngest son, born September 30, 1919, was 24 years old. Manung Mario Laksamana, you may have your seat here. Or what? There. Well, the death of a person will not change or affect the date on which he or she was born. The birth date will remain the same. Today, March 11, 2022, we, the Ortega twins of La Union, celebrate the birthday in heaven of Lola Paca and Lolo Joaquin. At 6.30 a.m., we offered Mass at Carmel of the Holy Family Monastery Chapel, officiated by Father Romeo Benitez, SVD. Breakfast here at Ivaristo Rosa Ancestral Home. A while ago, we had the program at Don Joaquin J. Ortega and Doña Francisca Laxamana Ortega Ancestral House at P. Burgos Street. It is love that makes us do great things beyond our comprehension. The statues of God our Father and San Juan de Ortega 50 inches made of cement were placed last night at the gate of the ancestral house. It was done by Tony Pilesa, a local artist. We, Prince Maria Luz, unveiled the God the Father statue while Marianilla, the son, won the Ortega. We have six 12 feet statue of God the Father. So very huge in the whole region one. Two in La Union at Sea and Sky. Two in Locusur at the Vegan Heritage Village. One at Panjan Ilocos Norte, a relative there, and one at Bayangbang, Pangasinan, which we visited last Sunday. The mayor there, the late mayor, had a shrine made, and a bonus is we were able to go and see the big statue of St. Vincent the Ferrer. He is the painted saint of reconciliation. Let us pause for a prayer by Zajra. Father God, we ask that you would bless all families. Lord, give us the wisdom and discernment we will make for this day. Guide our steps 
and help us to be your hands and feet in this world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay. So, aside from the big statues, we also have one foot statues, miniature. This was the idea of Mila and we brought with us statues when we had our year 2000 millennium uh, at uh, Europe and uh, Holy Land. We gave it as a gift to the many places we visited. Before they go, we came to meet San Saint John de Ortega, but English, or San Juan de Ortega. He is the patron saint of surveyors, architects. He lived 1080 to 1163. The image represents San Juan de Ortega as a priest contemplating on the cross of Christ. Unfortunately here, the cross was removed. I gave him a cross to place, but uh, wala nang oras. I just put the carnation flower here. Okay. The carnation, uh, this uh, that the old monastery of San Juan de Ortega was built by himself with the help of his friend and fellow saint Dominic de Calzada as a help point for pilgrims who walk in Santiago de Compostelo along the way of St. James. You know, I have, we have a funny experience here. Once we reached the monastery, I prayed at the, at the statue lying down and I thought it was St. John de Ortega. So, oh, St. John de Ortega, we're so happy we arrived. And then I read, no? So I went the uh, right side up to the uh, front. Oh, thank you, St. John. We, we saw you at last. And then Mila called me. She was at the other side. Luz, that's not St. John the Ortega. Come over here. And so <laughs> finally, third, uh, and then I saw the real St. John de Ortega. Uh, we now call on is it Jocelyn to, for the intercession. Oh, Jocelyn is not yet. Oh, the, other one. the other one. For intercession of St. John de Ortega. Just pray. Just, just read this one. Just read. Another, another one. Another one. Oh. Inspire us to respond to your call and dedicate our lives to your mission by the example of San Juan de Ortega. Flow us with your spirit to assist us to be worthy of your grace in this life and to attain everlasting joys in the life to come. We ask all those of you, O oh God, living, regaining forever and in your story about St. John de Ortega. When we arrived from our 2015 pilgrimage, uh, we had a statue made of cement, but smaller than what we had blessed a while ago. And also had like this, uh, fiberglass statue and gave it to all our relatives. One gift for the brothers and sisters of my late father, this thing. And then, when uh, we were at the house of 
my nephew, Butch Montilla Maglaya. He said, come over. Do not just drop. Do not just pass by. Enter the house. That was 2016. And in the conversation, he said, oh, we have to preserve the house. Let's make it a museum. And we twins, para kami magnet, na ayan, we followed it, yung advice niya. Okay. So, for, 20, for seven years now, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, we are trying our very best with the help of St. John de Ortega to have a Museum, Ortega Museum, pretty soon. Okay. Before we came here, we had a big tarpaulin nest. And this is the tarpaulin. Uh, it is uh, six feet by, what's this? I think 15 feet or 16 feet. And it is two, two rows. So we placed there, we discovered only this last month that the civil government of La Union was founded January 16, 1896. And coincidentally, we twins were born January 16, 1954. Now, no wonder why we call ourselves the Ortega Twins of La Union. Because our Lolo became the governor in 1901. Okay. So we said, I hope that we are the first to remember the birthday of Lola and I think we, uh, that's correct because we've been preparing for her birthday quite some time and uh, for Lolo he's like just like a star in the sky. We pray and uh, the door of uh, the house had been opened for us to the help of God that, that enabled us to have three blessings. So this is now the fourth blessing. So inside the house, fully uh, So now we come here where the house of the son of Lolo and Lola is located adjacent. These are now the roots. The, the, there is the roots. Okay. We have a beautiful family picture with Papa and Mama and my brother and Steve and sisters in front of that house. And also we twins at a very young age. Of course, we treasure the photo very much. The more we want to have it preserved. And uh, the statue of Lolo Joaquin, before it went there, last December 20, stayed here for a long time. And so with the portrait of Lola Paca dancing with our father. They are now placed there because that is the place it should be. Okay. So we have three blessings. We are fortunate to have three priests 
different praise. Father Laksamana, Father Perps Conception, Father Fontanilla, and now Father Romeo Benitez. Let us now have the cutting of the cake, Mila. One way also, okay, one way also of celebrating the birthday of our departed is having a cake. Isn't it when there are birthdays, we have a cake? And I said, this birthday of our deceased is not, is no different from the birthdays they used to have. Still the same. Looking forward to this birthday. So we have the cake. And it says, Happy 145th birthday, Lola Papa, and Happy 156th birthday, Lolo Joaquin. Love, or Tega Twins of La Union. And we are here at the second floor, Fondly called Ortega Twins Haven, Governor Lucero Street. So, I cut the cake, and you each have a piece of the cake. It's the possibility of having a dream come true that makes life interesting. It's good, I do not know where to buy this cake, if at Red Ribbon or at Max. But then I, yesterday, I cannot park my car, so I went to Max, and then I remembered, oh, I should offer a mask. See, the inspiration, so we offer the mask at Carmel. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Lola. It's a busy morning for Father Benitez. We started with a mass, <coughs> then blessing. Now, a message from Father Romeo Benitez. Yeah, um, by just looking at the program of today's uh, celebration, uh, I can say that through the initiative of our beloved uh, Ortega Twin Sisters. Uh, we are doing the three R's in life. You know? So we want to remember, we want to rejoice, and we want to renew. Uh, these are the three R's that I could think uh, we are doing now. We remember, we rejoice, and we renew. Okay? So on this day, we join with we join with our uh, religious, uh, pious, and energetic Ortega Twin Sisters together with uh, the members of their own family, relatives, and friends in celebrating the birthday anniversaries of, um, um, of their beloved grandparents, Don Joaquin, uh, Joaquin um, J. Ortega. Birthday anniversary today, March 11, 2022, and Dunia Francisca Laksamana Ortega, her 145th birthday anniversary last March 9 of this year, 2022. First, we remember, okay? Psychologists say that remembering our beloved dead is remembering. Thus, what we are today is basically either a reaction to a wounded memory or a response to a joyful, inspiring, and a loving one. Or it could also both. It could also be both. Okay. So celebrating the birthday and anniversaries of our grandparents is our way of remembering with heartfelt gratitude in our hearts, the Christian faith that they, had, that they believed in and taught to our parents and relatives, and gratitude for practicing the Christian virtues and values through our life 
of witnessing with their strict uh, discipline. So on the other hand, remembering the history of our ancestors could also lead us not only to understand the struggles and challenges they face in life, but also to show to them our compassion and love despite the flaws and mistakes that they might have done in the past from which we could also learn. As we remember our past, both our happy and painful experiences with our beloved ancestors, our grandparents, you know, um, siblings, we keep um, an album with photos of all of them. Uh, a while ago, we, we saw all these uh, pictures, pictures you know, a nice picture. So we did through the albums at least uh, twice or thrice a year, perhaps on November 2, the day of uh, our faithful departure, and in their birth and death anniversaries, when we remember and pray for for them all. Okay. So your family code says your ancestors count on you to remember them. I exactly that. Second, we rejoice. Today's celebration is a concrete expression of our gratitude or thanksgiving to God. We rejoice and thank God primarily for the gift of life and for whatever we are and help. No. We rejoice since we become what we are now because of the love and mercy of the Holy Triune God, because of the maternal help and intercession of our spiritual mother Mary, and the prayers of the saints of the church, especially St. John of Ortega, and the loving uh, support of those people around us. So as we rejoice today in this celebration, we must always remind ourselves to take good care of our present, which eventually become part of our memories. Let us always be instruments of love, unity, peace, understanding, and joy, so that we can have many things worth remembering and rejoicing later. We must express our love and reverence for the living more than or at least as much as we honor our beloved dead because our beautiful and wholesome relationship today when we are still alive will outlast all the flowers, candles, and music monuments offered to us long after we are all gone. So in this um, in his letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse 4, St. Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice. Meaning, we gladden or we give joy to others in Jesus' name. So your family quote says, It is not how big the house is, it's how happy the home is. I instruct like that again by the family quote. And the third one is we renew. Our desire to renew ourselves is our constant endeavor as followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. First, we hear the call of our Lord in Mark chapter 1, verse 15. And this is the summation of Christ's proclamation of the reign of God or the kingdom of heaven. It says, and I quote, This is the time of fulfillment. The reign of God is at hand. Reform your lives and believe. If you want really to, if you want the reign of love, peace, unity, understanding, joy to be realized in our reach, in our community, and most especially in our family, then we have to make a radical decision to reform our, ourselves, to repent, and believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ Himself. So that is the challenge for each one of us, especially this season of death. 
So, in this season of Lent, each one of us is expected to engage ourselves in the three pillars of Christian life that symbolize the ash that we received last Ash Wednesday. So A, the ash stands for um, almsgiving. Almsgiving. So we, we do that. It's an expression of our love to the Holy Triumph God. Uh, we share the blessings, whatever blessing that we have to others, especially the needy. And Jesus Christ himself said in Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, May go, whatever you do, the least of your brothers and sisters, you do it unto me. And also in that, Matthew chapter 25, verse uh, 45, our Lord says, Whatever you did not do, the least of my brothers and sisters, you did not do. So, Thanksgiving is one of the pillars of Christian life. So, uh, while we are still living, we do this, we manifest it as an expression of our love for God. And S in us stands for sacrifice. Part of our sacrifice is fasting. We fast because we want to uh, change our being, our outlook in life, so that we can uh, purify ourselves, then we can reach out to other people with a contrite heart. So we sacrifice our time, we sacrifice our uh, uh, resources for the sake of the need. So we want to get to express our love to God to others. And then we can only do that if we have that kind of uh, altruistic attitude, not only thinking our personal aggrandizement but for, for the good of other people. That is what we call an altruistic attitude. That is precisely the attitude of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have a lot of things to sacrifice. We can do that if you want. Okay. We can sacrifice these things that we don't need for the sake of the need. We don't own them. They own us sometimes in our life okay. and each in us stands for holiness we can achieve this when we engage in prayer when we engage in contemplation when we engage in reflection and meditation this is uh, one of the pillars of Christian holiness Look at those people who engage um, in prayer and contemplation and uh, meditation. The, 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 the level of their consciousness is quite high, even beyond the level of sense perception. Many to say, when you reach that level, you don't see, uh, you don't want to compare yourself with other people. You don't want to uh, to uh, desire for things in this world, and you even consider each thing that you see around as an expression of God's love. You can see the presence, you can experience the presence of God around us. People and the things that you see around us. It's different. So that's the proof. Of meditation, reflection, and prayer. And we call it holiness. And that's a challenge for each one of us. That's why last As Wednesday, you know, we were marked with a cross, you know, with uh, uh, the holy uh, ash, to remind each one of us that these are the pillars of Christian life. We are doing it. So nothing to worry about the last judgment because we are 
preparing ourselves. So that is uh, what our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. He says, Let your light shine before others, that they may see the good deeds in you, and glorify God the heavenly Father. So the question is, do other people recognize Christ in us? challenge for each one of us. And we just hope and we pray that the presence of the Lord will always be with us. So that others will be inspired <coughs> to manifest their life as they should be. So that is uh, actually a big challenge for each one of us. And um, I am struck by the family quote that I have read says the measure of a woman's character is not what she gets from her ancestors but what she leaves her descendants wow so I was wondering why our beloved uh, sister Mary Lou sister Maria Adila no we're able to, to get that uh, beautiful goal, you know, the belief. So, though they, they can inherit the, the riches of their grandparents, but they see something uh, very special. It is not the things that we inherit, but the things that we could live to our descendants. That means something to be uh, remembered, to be reminisced in the future. People will remember us because of the witnessing aspect that we have done, because of the goodness that we have shown to them not because of anything else. So that experience is lasting. You will be remembered. And there is only one who will remember all the endeavors in this world. Only our God. The Holy Tribe of God, I should say. I always recognize the Holy Tribe of God. God the Father, and God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. Through the intercession of Mama Mary and the intercession of all the saints, especially uh, Saint uh, John of Ortega. Uh, actually, Saint John of Ortega, uh, not only a priest but a hermit. As a hermit, he loves meditation, he loves prayer, he loves uh, reflection. That is lacking no, in our life as Philippines. We don't want to engage in reflection. We don't want to spend time in solitude. We don't like that. We want a very entertaining atmosphere. And that's the Filipino way. We are not an oriental people like the Hindus. But that is that is for each one of us. Okay, we, we, we go, we reach out to other people, we can socialize with them, but we should always have time for ourselves. We should always have time for prayer. We should always have time for, uh, for fulfilling the will of God in our lives. So that is the challenge for each one of us. Do we really have time for that? Always remember, when we are still alive, let us shine, let, let our uh, light shine before others. And to sustain it, we have to engage in prayer. Don't forget, the day of the Lord is Sunday. God has given us Monday to Saturday to look for anything that we need personally. Uh, look for everything that uh, we want to eat. Uh, but Sunday, the day of the Lord, we serve it. 
Cool. So, to quote our Kunen Mishari, we'd like to quote the motto of our founder, uh, Saint uh, Jansen, uh, Arnold Jansen. Yes? Says, may the darkness of sin and the night abandoned vanish into the light of the world and the spirit of grace. May the heart of Jesus live in the hearts of all. Good morning. Happy celebration. Thank you, Father, for your inspiring message. I'd like just to point out that Father was talking about contemplatives. Yes, uh, St. John was a contemplative, and so will uh, with La Madre, Santa Teresa de Abdullah. She says, God alone suffices. That was pointed out by Father a while ago, that uh, that is the essence of our To many, service is about power and prestige. And to others, it is fame and even popularity. However, to Jesus, is about surrender to God's will. Ano nakalagay dyan? Thy will be done. Not all who call me Lord will enter the kingdom I have, but only he does the will of my Father in heaven. Today, we don't only remember Lolo Joaquin and Lola Baca, but we also remember their nine children with their respective families. We remember Vicenta Ortega Panis. Yung anak niya, si Carmen Panis Jacinto, we, we visited her in her home. And uh, together with the son, Emil, both died after our visit to them. The family of Ramona Ortega Montilla, my nephew Butch also died and that was and he was the one who told us to pursue the Ortega Museum. I, we never expected that he would leave us that soon. But I think he is happy because we continue to do the mission that he has left behind. Then Jose Ortega. We remember Yon Chichit Ortega, the previous administrator of the house. Luis Ortega. We met Lourdes Ortega Vigis at the Lourdes Mansion. I know our papa used to visit to Luis there, and it was our first, my first time. I don't know if it's also the first time of Mila that we entered the Lourdes mansion. Of course, we were excited and we met our cousins, Bernardita also Ortega. Then, the family of Luis, the family of Francisco, the one here, the politicians, of Manang Corazon Ortega Espiritu, wife of former ambassador Espirito, she died December 27, 2019. Roberto Ortega, for those in Baguio, they know him as Mar Marcon Bu 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 then, Francisca Benedicto Paulino. I re what I remember her is, well, Mila worked at KBS. And when um, the CM Sky Hotel was almost finished, Days Inn Hotel was coming in. I had to call her. I said, Madam, 
what is your idea? Because they have this trader's uh, bank and she, and she told me, a trader's hotel, she told me, oh, if I were you, just manage it by yourself. Thank you for your good advice, Manang Kichi. Then, the latest to die, Ramon Ortega. Or Bonetsky. He died February 4, 2022. We go to the family of Joaquina Ortega Oros. Uh, Joaquin or Kinit died and so did the son, Jock Jock. In our family, my, our eldest sister died February. 27, 2015. There are only two families with no dead immediate relatives. And they are uh, my, the, the sister of my father, Mary Ortega Gono, and Joaquin Titin Ortega. May we now listen to my twin sister, Marianilla Arhen. Okay, come here with me, join me. Nila made a comic strip. The Bible says, everyone has a part to play in God's plan. We as, even as twins, by the way, what is uh, what are twins? Twins are two little blessings sent from above, twice the smiles and twice the love. To which God responded, of course. And we asked, what's our part? God said, transform your Lolo Watkins house into a museum. We accomplished for the last seven years. Okay. For the last seven years, we accomplished these documents. Could you help me? Could you? Okay. So these are uh, thick documents, and uh, we we visited our relatives and. Uh, we came to know them. There are people, the one that I read a while ago, that we met for the first time because they stay in Manila. We, we, say, we finished Museum 1, Museum 2. Oh, Museum 3 is... Uh, uh, museum 3, we even visited their tombs in Manila because there are those not buried here, Museum 4, and Museum 5. And then we celebrated their death anniversaries, Lola Paca and Lolo Joaquin. And now, birth anniversaries, okay? Complete. Then, we were not content, we forgot already about this, this uh, project, then came she said, oh, you have, that's a worthwhile project because she saw the, what music, what house is that? The Goko, Goko, and the uh, ancestral house in Taal, Batangas. So, we had three blessings, house blessings, December 20, January 16, our birthday, and February 2, February 2, the presentation of the Lord. And now, the birth anniversaries. Okay. And so, Nella, take the floor. Okay. Morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. You see, I'm holding my book in 
the footsteps of La Madre, Santa Teresa de Avila. And it is published by Europe Books. On Well, anyway, I'm very happy because this cake is full colors. Not only the cover, but all the, mostly all the pages that are colored pictures. Today, I am going to tell you the answers to the five questions sent by Valentina Harosi content manager of Europe Books. One, was the idea for this book born at a particular moment? What was that? The identity of La Madre is crucial, pivotal in our book, in the footsteps of La Madre, because La Madre is Santa Teresa de Avila. May I interrupt you? Previous to that, we have prepared three books in the footsteps of La Madre. First volume, edition. second edition, second edition, third edition. And then, who is La Madre? Santa Teresa de Avila. The idea of writing the book, Our Faith Live Experiences, was conceived as our contribution to the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines in 2021. It commemorates the introduction of Christianity in the Philippines. Teresa de Ahumada, as a child, must have heard of the Philippines according to the book, The Roots of Teresa's Nuns in the Philippines, written by Mary Teresa Sideco, OCD. The theme for the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines is gifted to give. Our book is dedicated to Spain's sitting King Philip VI and Queen Leticia who represents our victories. It was a grace that we witnessed the commemoration of the first baptism of Raha Kumabun, his wife, Hara Kumamai, and at least 800 of their subjects with a pontifical mass led by apostolic nuncio, Charles Brown, on April 14, 2021, at Cebu. We have accepted the gift, nurtured it, and now our mission is to share our faith experiences with others. Second question, what particularly significant experience in your life find expression in your book? My twin Luz receives an inspiration to go to Fatima, so we went for a Marian pilgrimage in 2002. In 2017, she received another inspiration, and we attended the 100th year of the miracle of the sun with these activities. October 11, prayed at the sanctuary of Our Lady of Ortiga. Mary appeared to a mute shepherd girl. Her father was filled with joy at seeing her daughter manage to speak and ordered her to do whatever the lady asked. October 12, we encountered Spanish mystic Saint Teresa of Avila whose statue was on top of the colony. October 13, attends the culmination mass. Upon setting foot at the colony, Luz receives a revelation from God. 
people were moving towards me. Somebody pointing and with a joyous greeting said, I knew that lady is special. I took a portrait of her. Then there were flashes of cameras. Noteworthy, in the 30th day, the first major motion picture on the miracle of the Fatima is the remark of Lucia's mother. What makes you so special, Lucia dos Santos? Coincidentally, at the airport in Greece, a co-passenger, Father Paul Fenich, a Roman Catholic priest, sketched loose face and later gave the portrait to her before embarking to Turkey. Third question, what is the message you want to send out to the readers? Everyone is called to be a saint. Saints next door, Pope Francis calls them. All we need to do is to live our lives in love and bear witness to God in all we do. Saint Teresa de Avila, as a teacher, does not want us to stick to her words, nor with her experience. She encourages us to have our own unique experience of God. Pilgrimages, making statues, producing films, writing books, look unseemly to us being married women, but we take seriously the reason why we are created, that is to know, love, and serve God. Read our book, and you will travel around the Philippines and the world. Above all, you will journey with St. Teresa of Jesus, Doctor of Prayer. St. Teresa says, you pay God a compliment by asking great things of Him. Recently, we twins were watching the old movies of Shirley Temple, the dimpled, curly-haired child star who acts, sings, and dances, and grins her way into the audience's heart during the 1930s in the grip of depression. Number four, how was your publishing experience? On January 15, 2021, Ada Calamare, Selamare of Europe Books wrote that she found my book really interesting. The contract was signed that I was working with a team of editors but gave her assurance she will supervise the whole process until the publication. Alessia Venditti on May 13, 2021 sets the draft with corrections. She chose the Roman Catholic Church hierarchy as part one, which made it easy for us to determine the other parts. Maria Federica Tartarelli, the graphic designer, on July 24, 2021, Maria sent the first chapter of my book, which I appreciated. Then came some problems, but was ironed out with the intervention, intervention of Elisa. The book in the year castle written by St. Teresa had nihil obstat and imprimatur printed. Monsignor Fadeus F. Marcado, nihil obstat, and Archbishop Edmundo M. Abayadidi in Primatur were on our book. Because my great sister keeps on insisting that these names are to be printed because it will entice the Catholic leaders to read. On October 15, 2021, I had a big tarpaulin posted at the wall beside our house. As a whole, I am highly satisfied with the work for on, fifth, on, for on February 15, as I mentioned a while ago, the book was a pleasant surprise printed in full color. Last question, are you planning to write more books? First of all, I give credit to the late Abud Santos Rabang, my professor who inspired me to write. I treasure the kind words he said of me. I was always impressed how Nila presented her synthesis, 
done masterfully and creatively with accompanying photos to express points of the faith she studied in my course. I had always encouraged Dila to write about the Catholic faith and tradition. Dila's initial reaction was an adamant no. But once she succeeded, successfully published her first book, she wrote other books one after the other. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, Mama Mary, St. Teresa of Avila, Avila 2015 Pilgrimage, 2017 Fatima 100 Pilgrimage, and the last footsteps of La Madre, Santa Teresa de Avila. I don't plan of writing more books. We twins had gone around the world in search of God, an encounter with God. It had become our evangelization, evangelizing efforts in the obedience of faith to the command, go, that? go to the world go and preach the gospel to every creature, leaving behind the building statue of St. Teresa. So for the seven continents, we left one statue. As suggested by Abbot Santos Nava, being tertiaries, being uh, secular order of the, being member of the secular order of Discal Carmelites, we come to stand still and pray until the rest of our lives. Thank you. And I present this book, Complimentary Copy, to Father Romeo Benitez, ah, SBD. Thank you. Thank you for accepting our invitation thank to bless you. the statues of God our Father and San Juan de Ortega, sharing with you my book, In the Footsteps of La Madre, Santa Teresa de Avila. Yours in the spirit of Car Carmel, Marianila Martínez. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much for this book. No? I'm very happy to, uh, uh, to have this kind of book. No? Uh, your uh, rich uh, uh, faith experiences. So, it depends also my personal uh, 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 spiritual life and vocation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. So we pray for one another. It has been a worthwhile day, and we also thank our cousin here, Mar Mario Laksamana, for and, joining us. And as I told you before, vote! Oh, oh, remember oh, to vote for Mario Laksamana for Council. <laughs> okay, group picture! Group picture! Group picture! Come, come, come. Come, come, come. come, come. Where will we have the group picture? Oh, nice to see you again, my former student. <laughs>